Fright Fest is going on right now in London, and there's a wave of new horrors that are coming out. Now, I had the opportunity to see That's a Wrap, and it's quite the slasher. But is it worth checking out? The cast of a film arrives at a wrap party, but someone is dressed up as the slasher in the film and begins to stage their own kill scenes. One by one, the cast disappears until the true nature of the evening is revealed. All right, so if you're in the mood for a slasher with some unique and impressive kills, this Giallo film has plenty to offer. But if you also want a good story, decent acting, slightly coherent dialogue, or even a point, this is going to be a disappointment. It is 94 minutes and an absolute chore to endure. This has a very independent and low-budget feel to it. And while there's nothing wrong with either of those categorizations, this movie takes the worst of those and then triples down on them. The story is basic and straightforward. There's a movie wrap party where only the cast and crew are invited because the director is sort of nuts and self-important and I guess maybe he's worried that others may try to steal the idea of this film. There's a very small gathering of people inside the studio and we get random smatterings of conversations which are meant to build out characters and invest us in their well-being. Pretty much no one is likable though, so that's a massive hurdle that the story fails to overcome. And then there are so many stereotypical portrayals that we see. There's a ditzy blonde who's obsessed with her social media presence, the overconfident amateur actor who thinks he's figured out how to make it big, and of course they make the one black character the pothead, always stoned out of his mind, and so much so that his name is Stony. It's all cringy. Now to build the tension and bring about the blood and the gore, we have this masked stranger who silently stalks the cast and crew, picking them off one by one. But interspersed within the kills is a ton of dialogue, and it goes on incessantly and is wildly uninteresting. Plus, all of the actors, they don't realize they're in a terrible film, so they're all playing it like it's a masterpiece, making it all the more worse to watch. Now, it could have worked if they had hammed it up and then taken the campiness that already existed and dialed it way up. There's so much useless exposition that probably ends up doubling the runtime. Now, I'd much rather had more cast and crew get slaughtered than to sit and listen to them incessantly drone on about nothing. But the one thing this movie does well is in the kills and the gore. Each new kill gets more and more creative, introducing unique ways to off a character. And while the editing is pretty atrocious and it results in Caesar-inducing stuttered strobing effects, the amount of blood that's shed is gloriously absurd, and it's very satisfying. I mean, there's a point when someone gets a cut on their neck and the buckets of blood that are produced. Ah, it was impressive. There's several different and amusing ways the characters meet their end, and you gotta hand it to the filmmakers for their odd and disgusting death choices. Now, outside of the violence, the editing and the filming choices, they're scattered and inconsistent. At one point, the film goes black and white, and it is emulating a famous horror movie, but it feels strangely placed. There's also a ton of red lighting that's in use. Sometimes it makes the setting a bit creepy, but mostly it just makes the scenes look like they couldn't afford to have more than one colored light on at a time. Now, the editing, it's frenetic and jumpy, and while sometimes that energy works with the killing frenzy, it's also spastic and repetitive, changing a sequence from grisly to awkward. And I don't think that was a desired outcome. Now, the film is also overly sexual, like it's pretty much a softcore movie that you'd really just find on late night cable, but with then a ton of violence mixed within it. Now, the scenes are drawn out and they don't add anything to the narrative, but if you enjoy some TNA, you're going to get a fair helping. I do want to go back to the dialogue for just a minute. The last 15 to maybe 20 minutes features a sort of bizarre monologue that almost put me to sleep. I mean, we get some villain exposition where the entire motive and the plan are explained to us, but it's delivered in such a slow and droning manner that it's very difficult to maintain any interest in what's going on. I mean, it's almost like the story was either trying to redeem a portion of it by building out the story at the end, or there was some contractual thing with the actor where they had to have a certain amount of dialogue and the end was the place that they ended up fulfilling that requirement. I mean, whatever the reason, though, it kills what little tension and momentum had already been established. Now, I'm really bummed that this wasn't a stronger entry for the festival. I love finding gems that are surprisingly good despite lacking a budget or known cast. Here, though, it's amateur hour all the way through, truly emulating the C-budget film that's depicted within the story. There's so much potential here. Had they either leaned in fully to the ridiculousness of the concept or heavily edit the script to cut out massive chunks of inane talking, really just in favor of increasing the kill count, that would have been awesome. This had the gore figured out. It just needed to exploit it to its maximum. 
But for as creative as the kills are and how strong the violence and bloodshed comes across, everything is castrated by the dully crafted dialogue, the disorganized plot and storytelling, and the melodramatic acting that doesn't lean into the campiness of the content. This was a disappointment pretty much all the way around and should be a hard pass. There's a lot of sex and nudity, a bunch of profanity, and a ton of impressively gruesome violence. I give That's a Wrap one and a half out of five couches. So what's a small budget horror movie that has surprised you? Now, I was impressed by both Deadstream and Host, but let me know yours in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.